All right. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, as the case may be. My name is Nathan, and uh, today what I'm going to be doing is taking you through a intro and welcome tour of Sandbox. Um, I want to basically just make sure that, uh, that that you get a idea about what Sandbox can offer without getting into all the details. There will be time for that later. So to get started, uh, as you can see here on the screen, uh, I'm at the login location. So let's go ahead and put in the email for what we're doing today. And then the password. And what's going to happen now is it's going to drop us right into the dashboard. Wait for that to come up here. So this is the Sandbox dashboard. This is what you will see with any account in Sandbox that you log into. Uh, generally speaking, you'll be logging into your own account, which will probably be a shared user access account. And the difference between that and an admin account is just that the shared access account uh, admin controls what you have privileges to. Uh, it's a good way for you to say you had an intern that's doing a little bit of work for you, but you won't, don't want them to have access to all the details of your contacts. You'd want to go ahead and set up a shared user account for them and then uh, set up their permissions that way. So this is the dashboard. Uh, it gives you essentially an overview of how your account as a whole is doing. You've got your calendar, which would show events that are coming up. You've got uh, kind of a little gauge here that just gives you an idea based on um, on people opting out or complaining, uh, spam complaints, uh, things like that will give you an idea how you're doing. And this is just kind of give you a rough feel for what your reputation as a whole is. Um, it's not necessarily tied to any actual uh, penalties or anything like that, but it is a good way to see if you're edging up into the red and sending out too many emails that are being viewed as spam or that are getting spam complaints. So if I scroll down, uh, this, is, this dashboard is actually customizable. You can remove some of these different widgets, uh, like this one will show you uh, how many groups you have and the numbers of contacts in each group. Um, right now there's only one group set up in this account. Uh, going a little bit further, you can see new signups, uh, ascending history if you've been sending emails. If you're uh, tracking your successes using opportunities and things like that, you can uh, track your KPIs, your key performance indicators. And then just moving on down, you can see if there's any activities that are out, outstanding or if any that have been completed and you want to see what those look like. Down here at the very bottom, you see the customized dashboard button, and that is exactly what it sounds like. Once you click that, you'll be able to rearrange the dashboard. So that's the dashboard. Now what I'd like to get into is basically I'll move across the top here. I want to explain a little bit about each of these uh, these subjects, if we'll say, uh, if we can call them that. First, though, I want to make you aware of the fact that most of the things that happen in Sandbox are defaulted to the group you currently happen to be in. This is the group drop down menu. If I click that arrow, you'll see all the groups that are currently in there. Right now, there's only one. I can get into more detail later about how to add uh, contacts to a group and how to add groups to your account. Uh, there's essentially no limit to how many groups you can have, and you can use folders to clean them up and uh, make it a little more presentable when you click the drop down. So, that right there is your group drop down. And again, the sandbox will default to the group you happen to be in. So knowing that, let's go ahead and start now with Home. Home is where you'd go if you want to go back to the dashboard from anywhere else that you'd be in Sandbox. It's also got My Account, which is where you would adjust the settings for your account. You can also do that over here under Settings. And then further, there's Marketplace and Automation. Uh, a lot of people don't need that. Uh, think of Sandbox like a giant toolbox. There's a lot of tools in here, and you may not need all of them, but if you do, um, we're definitely here to help and I can uh, help get you started on some of the lesser used and lesser known areas of Sandbox. Um, to start with though, I want to highlight the Help Center. Click on that uh, and immediately what's going to happen is you're going to end up in the Help Center uh, area. This is one of the most in-depth help areas I've seen in a lot of programs. You can do a search and as you can see there's a couple different options. There's exact match or keywords for that search. Then there's general topics, subject areas, cheat sheets, and then my favorite, there's both quick and more in-depth video tutorials. When I was first starting to learn Sandbox, I spent quite a bit of time in here, and when I have questions, I still come back here to do my research first before contacting our developers. So this is a really good area to spend time in if you're wanting to learn Sandbox. 
All right, so that's kind of home. Uh, again, we're just doing a brief overview. We can definitely go into more depth later. Moving over, you're going to see contacts. So in contacts, you're going to see several different things. And think of contacts, this drop down, as kind of your control center for all things relating to the contacts that you're putting into Sandbox, the people that you're keeping track of, whether they're current clients, past clients, contacts, prospects. This is where you come to do searches on them, to find out information, to, as you can see, import files, and uh, where you come to export data. And then this is also where you do lead scoring and prediction. Uh, again, prediction is not used very often, but it's a tool that's there if you need it. So first of all, let's go ahead and go into view, uh, view contacts. This is going to take you to where you would do a search. Let me go ahead and let that pull up here. So again, like I was saying, when you're in Sandbox, it defaults to the current group that you happen to be in. As you can see in this search box here, it defaults to this group, but you can search all contacts across all groups just by clicking all. We'll go back to this group for right now since there's only one group in the account. Uh, as you can see here, there's quite a few different options with the filtered search. Again, I'll probably do a more in-depth uh, tutorial on how to do searches later on, but for right now, just to show you, you can search based on any data field that's in Sandbox, including ones that you can add custom. Uh, you can do they contain or they are or not. So there's quite a few different rules that you can use to help isolate your search. And then if you click this little plus button, you can add multiple criteria. So this is the search area, as you see across the top here. Uh, there's a lot of other uh, options that pertain to your contacts and pertain to what you will be doing with them for cleaning up, um, you know, removing duplicates, doing a lot of things like that. You can also import new contacts from this tab or again from the drop down you can go to import. So one other thing that's under contacts that I want to highlight is lead scoring. Uh, a real simple way to look at lead scoring is assigning points to all the different activities that, that a, a viewer, a contact, uh, someone would do, whether that's reading an email, clicking a link, uh, forwarding it, doing surveys. You can also assign points to websites if you've activated the web tracking through Sandbox. And then what happens is Sandbox tracks these points as, uh, as your contacts accumulate them and we can do an automation that will let you know if they've reached a certain level in a day uh, so that you know when you have a hot lead. Essentially they get uh, five points or more in one day. We think that that's a pretty good indication of interest and it's definitely recommended that you follow up with them as quickly as possible. Once again this is the hot leads area and uh, I'll go into more detail on that and in another video. All right next what we're going to do is uh, communicate. And just like it sounds, uh, communicate, this has to do with most of the areas of communication that you'll be using in Sandbox. Uh, Sandbox has a really in-depth selection of ways that you can reach out to your contacts and stay in touch with them and cultivate that relationship. Uh, the first one on the list is email. And by clicking this, this is going to take you to your basic email creation area. Um, not only can you create your own from scratch, you can use HTML co uh, source coding. You can view the source and see what's in there once you start to work on it. Um, but on top of that, Sandbox offers some pre-done templates that you can then customize. So if you go over to Templates, wait for it to load, Browse Templates, then what will happen is it will load a lot of its pre-done uh, templates. And as you can see, they've been adding responsive versions so that it will be responsive depending on your browser uh, or device that you're using. Uh, pick any one of these, load it, and then you can alter any aspect of that, uh, of that template and, uh, and make it work for you and uh, for your clients. Let me close out of that real quick. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the email creation area. So uh, come here real quick. This is where your email is. Let's pretend that we actually have one ready to go, uh, ready to send out. You can do a test send. Uh, basically just enter the emails of anybody that you want to send it to and we definitely recommend that you do a test send. The reason being is it's a good way to see how that email is going to react across multiple platforms. There are some, uh, some email platforms out there that just don't play as well with uh, other companies and, and products as others do. So it's a good idea to send it and see how it's going to look to maximize the effectiveness across a wider range. 
Um, once you are actually ready to send it, again, Sandbox defaults to the group you happen to be in, so that's who's going to receive it unless you edit the filter options. And again, this filter is much the same as what you would find in the view contacts, up underneath contacts. You can uh, search either all contacts or just the group you're in, and then put some other variables in there depending on what you're looking for. Once you're done, once you have your contacts the way you want them to be, now you're going to go ahead and schedule that email to go out. You would come down here to this little calendar. Let's just say we want this email to go out on the 30th. Click that, come over here, pick what time you want to go out. Let's just say we want to go out at 10 o'clock a.m. You would hit send message. And then what's going to happen is you'll see it next in track email. So let's go ahead and jump there. Uh, I actually don't want it to send, so I'll undo that later. So when it's ready to go and when it's finished queuing up, you'll see it right here. You'll see this email. You'll see that it's ready to go out, and you'll see when it's supposed to go out. That's how you'll be able to track what you have ready to go when you're doing an email broadcast. Once you've actually sent an email, you come to this tab. You'll be able to see it. You click on it. And then you can see a summary. You can see a lot of information about that email. Uh, I'll definitely be getting into that in a different tutorial, uh, so stay tuned. So let's go ahead and go back up to communicate because there's some other key features that I want to show you. We've done email. We've done track email, drip campaigns. A lot of people aren't really sure what that is. Um, so for those of you who know, uh, bear with me while I explain it for those who don't. So a drip email is exactly what it sounds like. And the reason that they put little drips next to it Think of a dripping faucet. Uh, there's drops that come at regularly scheduled intervals, and uh, those drops are your emails. So you can pre-set up an entire campaign that's activated as soon as a contact gets dropped into the group. When they get dropped in the group, they start getting those emails based on that delay that you've set for those emails to come to that person. You can uh, schedule them out a year, maybe even more. We haven't even gone that far out with them. Generally speaking, though, you know, just a few emails if you want to follow up, if they showed interest in something and you want to activate it, that's how you do it. You come in to create a new drip campaign, title it, decide when you want to go out, whether it's immediate, a scheduled delay, a specific date uh, for an anniversary that's recurring, or a fixed date. You go ahead and pick the email template that you have already created. And then if you want to do a workflow, you could assign one of those as well. Briefly, what a workflow is, think of an in sandbox series of commands that accomplish a different task depending on what you want it to be. Again, that's something I'll get into in a different uh, tutorial, but for now just know you can add other actions along with sending the email and then you save and you're good to go and you just keep adding as many messages as you want to that drip campaign. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of that, go back up over here. Now this is an option that not a lot of people use, but it's very powerful if you do want to use it. Sandbox has the capability of sending out text messages for you. You would essentially buy a number using, um, using uh, Twilio through Sandbox. You buy it through Sandbox, um, and, and at some point I can show you how to do that as well. But what you do is get the number, make sure it's a, a text-capable number, you can create your campaign. You can use keywords that if somebody replies back with that keyword, it will trigger a workflow or do something else. A really uh, quite a few cool options that you have available for interacting with your clients and your prospects and contacts using their their mobile phones and text capability. Going down a little further, Sandbox also integrates with uh, social. So you can uh, set up an account in Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and then integrate Sandbox with it, and Sandbox will begin to work with those accounts. Come a little bit further, you can do a chat through Sandbox. Again, a lot of these are tools that people already have a, a different version that they prefer. They're in here in case somebody doesn't have them and wants to make use of what Sandbox offers. There's collaboration. Uh, so if you're working with different partners on a project, you can use that to track progress, stay in communication, contact with each other. And then a real cool option here is surveys. You can use Sandbox to set up and track the answers to surveys. Uh, you can embed them in emails or have them stand alone where it's an anonymous survey. And that way you can get a feel for what your contacts think and what they're interested in, what they like. So that's surveys. So we've kind of gone through communication here. 
Uh, next thing I'd like to jump to is calendar. This is pretty straightforward. You can jump to a monthly view, a weekly view, a daily view, or just a list of upcoming events. Right now, we don't have any events in this account since it's a demonstration account that just got set up. So what I'm going to do is just load the calendar real quick so you can see what it looks like. Down here at the bottom, you have some check boxes that allow you to pick what you want to see visible on that calendar. Um, I recommend checking most of them so that you can see your activities, your reminder emails, uh, all those sorts of things, and you can see that right here. So this is also where you would come to set up locations um, and basically handle a lot of that things, see events that are coming up if you've scheduled any. So calendar is a really good way to keep track of that. Again, a lot of people use their own calendar system through their email. It's not a problem. In fact, you can actually connect to those and see those calendar events on this calendar and vice versa using uh, iMapping. That's something that we can get into another time as well. Now coming over here to apps. Now these are uh, digging a little bit further into what I was talking about before, which is all the tools that Sandbox offers a lot of people don't need. There's accounting, advancement, brand monitoring, coupons, forums, performance, print campaigns, projects, ticketing, and wiki. The last two I think would be my favorite. You can set up a wiki just kind of like Wikipedia where it's uh, a center of knowledge, a knowledge base. Above that is ticketing. You would use that to set up your own support site. Um, uh, people can go to the URL and fill out a form and then the ticket will go to the correct person based on the subject that somebody's needing help with. Uh, there's quite a few different customizable options for ticketing as well. So that's all under apps. Next is website. A lot of people don't know this, but Sandbox will actually create your website for you if you don't have any other website options. Again, most people use WordPress, have their own website already when they come in to Sandbox. But if you don't have that option, you can use Sandbox to build your own website. What's really cool about this is that whether you build your own or have one pre-existing, uh, you can put tracking on it, which will allow Sandbox to track both your unique visitors and the visitors that are coming as contacts already in Sandbox. You'll be able to see what pages they're on, assign lead scoring to it, and get a feel for what they're doing, what they think, and their activities on your website. It's an extremely useful way to keep track of what's of interest to people and to improve your site as well. So once we come in here, you can see you can check visitors, known contacts, conversions, pipelines, refers, locations, pages and scores, comparisons, automation, and then here's where you get the code that you'd be putting on your existing website for tracking. Uh, so a lot of these things, if you're building your own site, you'd come up in here. Generally, most people don't need to, but this is where you would design and build your own website. So we could definitely go into that more too. If you have questions on that, feel free to reach out to us. Next one, media library. Uh, so a word of warning, a bit of caution on this, the way Sandbox is designed, it can be compartmentalized. Again, this is similar to having shared user access. If you want somebody to have access to certain things, but not all of it, Sandbox has designed it so that your media library is only group specific unless you tell Sandbox to share that file across all groups. So if I were to upload a picture in here, I would need to select a little button that says uh, available to all groups in order to share it with all groups. This is very useful for the compartmentalization, but on the downside, if you don't share it with all groups and you delete the group that it's in, it will delete that content as well. So recommendation is, unless you are being careful about who uses what, uh, go ahead and share your content across all your groups because then it's easier for you to access it from other groups as well. Uh, so your media library, you, uh, this is where you'll store your email templates. Uh, this is also where you'll st store your files, as in your pictures, images, files that you want to upload, and any videos that you want to use as well. Uh, and then you pull from this to put the content into emails, web pages, whatever you need to do. So that's first part of the media library. Second part is something really cool. It's called the link library. As you begin to build emails and have your own links, things that go to your website, things like that, you can add the link in here, add a new link, and then you can automate a reaction based on that link. So in other words, if somebody clicks on it in an email 
it can trigger a workflow that will send them a different email or send you a notification that you need to call them because they showed interest. So that's just one small way that you can use that and really leverage the power out of Sandbox and what it can do for you. So this has been kind of a quick overview, uh, just to go back over it real fast. Home, uh, highlights in there, dashboard, help center, my account, those are your primary areas that you'd be using. Contacts, view contacts, that's where you do a lot of the searching and cleanup of your databases. Import, this is where you pull more in. Lead scoring, and that's how you'll keep track of people's activities and how interested they are as a lead. Communication, definitely a highlight of Sandbox's abilities. Automated marketing, so you're going to be able to create your emails, track them, set up drip campaigns, do texting, and the list goes on from there. Calendar, keep track of your events, activities, uh, your CRM activities that have been assigned to you, which we can get into in another day, but basically think of it as, as like homework that you need to do to keep up with your, uh, with your contacts, and you can mark them as completed when you're done. Apps, again, a large section in the toolbox that has options that most people don't need, but it's there if you do. Website, building, managing, and tracking your website. Not to mention, I didn't touch on this, but sign-up forms. You can create a form that people can use to sign up for either events, activities, information, or appointments, all sorts of options there. And you can use uh, pretty much any of your data fields for those sign-up forms to get, get information like a website or something like that. Media library, you've got files, images, and video, and a link library. And then settings, that's basically where you'd come to keep track of your account, make changes to like your password uh, or your email address, and do things like that. So that's that's basically the over overview, the introduction to Sandbox. And I look forward to digging a little bit deeper with you on uh, some of these topics uh, on an individual basis. Till next time, I'll talk to you later. Thanks.